Battle of Adwa happened on the 1st of March 1896. This is how Ethiopia's Emperor Manalik II and his Empress Queen Tayutu Betu crushed the Italian army. It all began when the Berlin Conference, where a bunch of thugs decided it was time to carve Africa up. The carving of Africa conference started on the 15th of November 1884 and by the 26th of February 1885 Africa and Africans had been divided and separated by borders. The Berlin Act was the result of Berlin conference and the questions to ask is who authorized the acts as sanction? We are informed the act was called for by Portugal while Otto von Bismarck, the first chancellor of Germany, was the forefront of the debate. Well, after the debate, the African continent, without consultation to any Africans, found themselves under the protectorate of a different European kingdom. The land of Ethiopia, the country that introduced coffee to the world, the land that provided the beautiful queen Bathsheba, who seduced King Solomon, was handed over to Italy on a platter. Africa had been sliced up like a pizza. It is said the Berlin Conference was called because Europe had gone through a number of wars, all because of the scramble for Africa. But this time, they felt it best to sit down and strategize who to have which portion of Africa. It is surmised that 14 countries attended the conference. These were Austria, Hungary, Belgium, Denmark, yes, Denmark, France, Germany, Britain, Italy, Netherlands, Portugal, of course, Russia, Spain, Sweden, or Sweden and Norway, which was unified from 1814 to 1905, and funnily enough, Turkey and the USA. Although this is no surprise, Emperor Manilik II of Ethiopia was scratching his head, trying to figure out how best to prevent Ethiopia from becoming a protectorate of Italy. The Emperor could not wrap the thought around his head. The emperor had not forgotten how Egypt's queen Cleopatra was eventually murdered. Papa Africa surmised that the Europeans knew full well the Italians would end up biting more than they could chew, but decided to sit back and watch from afar. So this was the precursor of the Battle of Adwa. Emperor Manilik II, his leadership skills can be compared to Ghana's flight Jerry John Rawlings. Emperor Manilik II being a great military general at age 52, was within a short space of time able to successfully mobilize 
and unite the people of Ethiopia, irrespective of tribe, social class, status, etc. It didn't matter if you were Tigrayan, Shoan, Oromo, Walatia, Amharic, Hebrew, etc. The aim was to unite the country to fend off the Italian army and against any would-be oppression. This was impressive because Ethiopia is quite large and many before him, such as Theodros II from 1855 to 1868 and Johannes IV from 1871 to 1889, had tried but with great difficulty. We salute Emperor Manelik II and Empress Tayetu Betu because Africa and Africans can learn a great deal from our Ethiopian cousins. What precipitated the final straw was the negotiation of the Treaty of Wichal right. on the 2nd of May 1889 with the Italian government officials. During the negotiation, and to avoid a bloodbath and to buy time, it is surmised that Emperor Manelik II is said to have offered the northern territory of Ethiopia to the Italians, that's modern day Eritrea and northern Tigra, in exchange for 30,000 muskets and 28 cannons. Hmm. But that sent alarm bells ringing and the Italians realized the emperor might or definitely had something up his sleeves, just as the Italian government officials did. The treaty was finalized and ready for signature between the Emperor Manelik II and the Italian government officials. The Treaty of Wichale was scribed in Italian and Amharic, and the Emperor and his team read the treaty in detail, dichotomizing each word until they reached Article 17 of the treaty, where all hell broke loose, based on the choice of words, could and must. Article 17 of the Treaty of Wichale stated in Amharic language that the Emperor of Ethiopia could have recourse to the good office of the Italian government in his dealing with other foreign powers. But it is surmised that the treaty in the Italian language had the word must. The emperor was livid with the choice of words and was determined not to be under the protectorate of Italy and was determined not to cut out to anyone. The emperor used this as the platform to help rally the whole of Ethiopia to fight for the lives against tyranny from foreign forces. There was a back and forth with Italians, apparently for three years, from September 1890 until September 1893, where the treaty was eventually denounced. By this time, Emperor Manelik II was ready to face the Italians on the battlefield. The Italian government was not amused, and Papa Africa says Italy was a laughing stock throughout Europe. Papa Africa continued, the rest of Europe were saying to Italy, I told you so, if not verbally, with their eyes and body gestures. Italy was determined to prove it could easily bring down one of the giants of Africa, the Abyssinians, the Ethiopians. The Italians declared war on the 1st March 1896, almost three years after the Treaty of Uchala was denounced. Emperor Manelik II was quick to gather an army of 100,000 plus troops in just two months, where he was said to have personally rallied 35,000 troops. He was able to mobilize between 70,000 to 120,000 rifles, 5 million cartridges, and spent over 1 million plus dollars in 1895, 
not mentioning gunpowder, food for the troops, artillery, etc. Emperor Manalik II, his beautiful wife, Empress Tayutu Betu, also played a significant role. Putting aside her beauty, she was described as a bellatrix. Similar, similar to the Asante woman of Ghana called Yasantua, who outmaneuvered the British during the Anglo Asante Wars for years. And Prestaya to Betu also mobilized 6,000 men, which she commanded. She got help from her brother, Ras Wele, the viceroy of the land of Wolo, Ras Michael. And get this her daughter, the future empress, Zeweditu also fought under this powerful queen. The Battle of Adwa is said to have commenced just before dawn on the Northern Territory of the Tigray province with Emperor Manilik II commanding 120,000 soldiers against 19,000 Italian soldiers. At a blink of the eye, the Battle of Adwa was over with the death of 6,000 Ethiopians and about 8,000 wounded. Italy had been crushed with 4,600 plus 1,000 Ascaris locally recruited troops were killed, leaving 1,000 Italian soldiers injured. 1,900 Italians and their 1,000 Ascaris were taken as prisoners. The Emperor Manlik II and his wife, or Empress Taya Tibetu, crushed the Italians, sending a strong signal to the rest of the world. A united nation, be it an African nation or not, shall always win the day. We salute Ethiopia, Ethiopians, Emperor Manilik II and Empress Tayo II Betu for not allowing Ethiopia to become a protectorate of Italy. This is in the history books. And we are grateful that Ethiopians were able to put their internal differences aside to fight for their nation at the Battle of Adwa on 1st of March, 1896. On behalf of Africa Lenezi, we would like to wish everybody well in Ethiopia. We hope the issues that you're having right now will eventually be resolved and everything will come back to normal. We would like to see Ethiopia progress, do well, as it's quite important for the whole African continent. We wish you well and we hope all goes well within the next few years. Thank you very much for watching. See you all Give you all what your life is I know what I say Give me 